Britain's favourite music station, Radio 1. On Medium Wave and FM Stereo, this is National Radio 1. there. This is TV on the radio. Thomas Vance, the music vendor. Welcome to the Friday Rock Show. Where tonight, the bulk of the program is devoted to Judas Priest. Rob Halford of The Priest does all the talking in between tracks from the new album, Ram It Down, and some really good stuff from their older albums. As it cuts such as, we got Grinder, Exciter, The Cheater, Beyond the Realms of Death, and Heading Out to the Highway. So, in the main, it's a pre-special for though there will be a few buckles chucked in and an excellent session by Little Angels. The time now is exactly, oh, well, give or take a few seconds. Ten minutes past ten, I think it's time for a Judas Priest special. I was very lucky. Last, uh, a week ago yesterday, actually, I was over in Berlin, went to see the priest on the, uh, I've told you this last week, but I'll tell you again, went to see them on their, but the first ever sort of aspect of their tour. They were four gigs into their European tour, and they hadn't played together for something like 18 months. They worked together in the studio, but they never done any live performances. Okay, so, let me tell you that they were absolutely excellent. Part of the event was that I got, got to, talk, to talk to Mr. Rob Halford, which was excellent, because he's a real good chatter, as you're going to hear, and also about the other guys in the band. So this is a pre-special. It's all about them. It's going to tell you what they've been doing, how they feel, and of course, there's tons of priest music. Go for it. Hi, everyone. This is Rob Halford, the mercenary of metal from Judas Priest. You're listening to The Friday Rock Show on Radio 1. Why has the priest been away from the UK for so many years? We could write a book. Listen, I've got to tell you, you, the priest maniac fans, have been waiting for the priest to come back. We're just very, very excited, looking forward to coming back to uh, playing UK sounds again, UK grounds again, and uh, it's going to be a blast, a real blast. Do we still live in the UK? You might be asking. Yes. Halford still has his abode in Warsaw. I won't tell you where, because you'll be, you'll be coming around looking for uh, a beer or two. But uh, I'm still there. We all live there. We've all got homes in, the, in and around the Midlands. Although, for the most part, the priest is uh, wandering around all over the, the, uh, the planet these days. But that's still home for us. We are still a British heavy metal band. And Judas Priest always will be a British heavy metal band. The priest is British. The priest is metal. And the priest is coming home. Now, when the, uh, the mighty priest comes back to UK soil, we're kicking off. In home ground, yes, Birmingham, where the priest began all those years ago. Listen to Monsters of Rock and Run It Down, you'll get the you'll get the message from the, from that particular song in general. But um, yeah, we kick off in the powerhouse. There's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of memories, a lot of sentimental stuff will come flooding back. I'm sure as we hit that first note uh, on the night. But uh, we uh, we wanted to play uh, the powerhouse mainly because as as those people that have been to the powerhouse and for you that haven't been there, it's basically a uh, it's not a club venue, but it's a, um, it's by no means your, your big, uh, your big hall kind of Wembley or your NEC kind of thing. It's a very down to earth, gritty, heavy, sweaty, one on one kind of situation. There's very little room for lights, there's very little room for all the other stuff that you would normally associate with metal. It's going to be straight from the heart. It's just, uh, it's just the priest, the music and the people. We're looking forward to it and it's going to be a great night like every other one's going to. If you look back through the ages in uh, in heavy metal and in, in, in rock in general, you, you'll find that a lot of groups have come from the Birmingham area. I don't know why that should be. I think that it's still true to say that the one of the elements of, um, of metal in particular has got this real working class edge to it, you know. We're, uh, everyone of us in Priest comes from that kind of family uh, background. I grew up in, in the, the area of Warsaw, which is a, a very kind of... Um, comprehensive industrial town with, with steel works and iron works and leather works, got a bit of leather there of course. So uh, I, I, I guess that's what, I guess one of the reasons is is uh, is that, that combination of, of all the smoke and all the, the, the noise and all the energy, it kind of is inbred in you, you know, and uh, Birmingham is, is famous for that. Um, I've always said it'd be a bit difficult if Judas Priest came from Barclay Square. It wouldn't quite have the same edge, would it? 
we we've had the the, uh, the good fortune to record at uh, most of the, uh, the the major studios around the world, but this time around, first of all, we wanted to be a little bit closer to home. I mean. We made Turbo out in the Caribbean, and it's a bit of a distraction, guys. I've got to tell you, you look out the studio window, there's the beaches, there's the ladies all oiled, their bodies are on the beach, the coconuts are there, the parrots are flying around in the air, the, all, 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 all the unmetally stuff is beckoning you out there, you know. It's, it's hardly the place to make a heavy metal album. But essentially, we wanted, first of all, to be fairly close to home, to the UK, so we could nip back and forth, especially as we were going to get back for Christmas time. Um, but the other reason was that essentially Pop Studios, which is the name of the place, P-U-K, is, um, is a fantastic uh, studio. It's, it's a weird setup. It's right in the middle of a field. I mean, can you imagine in the middle of a field? But it's there. It is, in fact, a, uh, a converted farmhouse, which began, as I understand, as a monastery, which is uh, kind of a coincidence, the priest in a monastery. We just wanted to get in there, get our heads down, no distractions, and get on with the job. So we went there in October of... 87 for two months, took that Christmas break, went home, had turkey, ho ho ho, stuffed our faces, got drunk, fell over, put on about 20 pounds each, and then we went back to Denmark. When you've made as many albums as the priest and you've been in the business for so long, you know what you want from a studio. Puck Studios had what we were looking for, so the priest went there and the end result was Rammy Down. Going through the metal mists of time now, of course, way, 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 way back. Rockerola was the first name of the album. Can you think why? Oh, dear. Listen, this was the first Judas Priest album. When you go into a studio for the first time to make your first ever album, I've got to tell you, it's the greatest thrill in the world. There were some great songs on there. This still is one of my favourites. For example, would be um, Never Satisfied uh, or, or The Cheater or... Um, uh, Deep Freeze. All of these songs uh, were in the very, very early catalogue of Judas Priest. Songs that we'd played many, many times before that up and down the clubs in um, in the UK. It'll still come through, you know, if you put it on, crank up the speakers. You might have to roll a bit of bass end on there. <laughs> but uh, it'll still happen and it's still got some good stuff on it. So, rock and roll, that's where it all began. You know, I I've said, and a few of us have said, that it's a bit like a marriage, the Judas Priest outfit. I think when, you, when, you've, when you've spent as much time as, as, a, as you have with each other, it's almost like a family. And families have fights, and families have pressure. And you either work those kind of things out, or you don't, you know. Sometimes there's a problem, and, uh, you know, fists start to fly, and things get broken, and one thing or another happens. But I can quite honestly say that we've never, ever come to blows, and I think had we have done that, then um, the priest may not have been around uh, all, all these years. But essentially, when we've been faced with the problem, when we've been faced with the pressure, we've really rallied round and come together because we we believed in the band then, we believe in the band even more now, and we really work to achieve the things that we want to achieve. We're still feeling very positive and very strong and full of conviction and energy and all that good stuff that, that keeps an outfit working together. But there are times, and there still do come times, when the pressure gets a bit heavy with you. My personal feeling about pressure is that, um, you know, you either handle it in, in two ways, you either you either go with it in a positive way and make something good out of it, because it, it can be good to be faced with that kind of situation. It pushes you, it, um, it, it can bring good things out of you, and uh, in general terms, it can, uh, it can be a, a, whole, a whole experience of learning that you can put to good use. The other side is, you go down the toilet, you know, you take it the wrong way. And we've all seen that happen, we've all seen bands where, you know, we've got so-and-so on guitar for this album, and then, woo, who's this new guy playing live on tour, you know, and, and that's a pity. Um, we've just been very, very lucky, I suppose, to get the the chemistry right, if you want to call it the chemistry. The personalities were right, the, um, the uh, things fell into, sh in, into shape, especially when Dave Holland joined us. The, uh, the priest aficionados that were with us from day one, well, no, we've had a bit of a trouble in the drumming department. I mean, let's face it, let's face it, there's this guy, right, he comes in with two big lumps of wood in each hand, he sits down on a stool and he knocks three parts of hell out of things that surround him. You know, you've got to be some kind of person to do this kind of job. You know, it's the same thing with the vocalist. You stick this piece of metal in their hand and they're screaming the lungs out. It's just, it's very difficult. Dave Holland and Dave joined us for the British Steel album and from then on, of course, people know the good stuff that happened with Priest.
if we look back and, and talk briefly about the, the first live offering that this band put out, Unleashed in the East, what a great title, Unleashed in the East. Um, I'll tell you, the, the way that came about was that uh, we went to Japan for the very first time and Epic Sony, our record company out there, had, uh, had just been provided with this incredible new mobile system and they said, look, Priest's coming, can we possibly put together some live stuff just specifically for use in Japan and nowhere else in the world? So we said, you know, sure, let's, let's see what we can work out together. We recorded all of those shows. The end result was that, um, that it, it was released as a worldwide uh, album, which we were thrilled to do. Uh, time felt right and all the other stuff that is important when you release a live offering. So. Unleashed in the East came out uh, throughout the rest of the world, but we recorded it in the Budokan in Japan. Budokan is like, how would you say, it's like the Wembley of um, of, Tokyo, of, of of London. It's like Wembley or, or maybe a Earl's Court or something like that. It's got a lot of a lot of magic about the place. And to a certain extent, when Chris first went out there, it still had the, the whole Japanese thing, had, a, had a, a, a mysterious kind of thing attached to it. You know, I mean, people that had previously previously been out was like Purple had been, been very big out there and uh, a few other American acts had been out there too. So, uh, I, I just distinctly remember that first trip when the curtains would go up, you know, on the stage. There was a curtains on there in Japan. But the curtains would go up and then the stage would be flooded with presents and flowers. It was like beetle mane. It was absolutely amazing. It was just like, God, what is this, you know? And then, of course, the other thing is it's 95% girls. It's a bit strange, really, because you're looking out there, you know, throwing your bits about all over the stage, the sweat's flying, the studs going everywhere, guitar strings are breaking, the smoke, there's bombs, the God knows what's like, hell on stage. And you look out there and it's like, this isn't a Cliff Richard audience, is it? No, 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 this is, this is, this is Judas Priest. But that is the way it can be. And it can be a little bit off-putting for, um, for people when they go out there for the first time. But uh, it's true to say that they're a terrific bunch of people. They really love their metal. They're real metal maniacs. And we always look forward to going out to Japan. It's a great place to go to. And if, uh, if any of you metal maniacs out there do at some point get the chance to visit Japan, go and see a metal band at the Burger Camp because it will be something you'll never forget. It's a real one-off experience. When we, uh, when we came to put together the Ramming Down album, the first project that we worked on was this song, this great Chuck Berry classic, Johnny Be Good. The movie people were looking for a metal band to put a metal interpretation to it. This is a great classic. This is one of the big all-time rock and roll classics. This is where it all began for me personally. You know, if you look back in heavy metal, you go back to the blues and the amalgamation between that and early rock and roll, Chuck Berry, Little Richard, uh, Bill Haley in the Comets, and before then the old blues man, you know. Um, it all it all kind of stems in in the murky distance. That's where it all kind of began. The pot for metal began there. Uh, so it's kind of a tribute thing as well, to a degree. And uh, all of these things in mind, we thought, well, let's crack it. Let's let's see what we can do. And for the first uh, first week that we were in Denmark in October, we uh, knocked around the idea. We finally got an arrangement which was priest, you know, like we've done with. John Byers, Diamonds and Rust, like, uh, like we've done with um, Peter Green's Green Man Alicia, like we've done with Gary Wright from Spooky Two, Better Boy You Better Than Me. He had all of these um, these priest stamps all over it and it became a priest song. So it eventually was sent back to uh, the people in America. They went wild for it, thought it was great. The end result of it was that it, it made its way to the album. You know, as, as well as I do, that this band has never been one to conform. We've never been a band, a metal band, that's gone in there and gone, OK, I've got to write ten more metal tracks. Let's see, we'll do this song again, but we'll just change the words and we'll change the, the riffs and put it in A instead of in E. We've never done that. We've always wanted to, to come across with as much originality and as many different ideas as possible. So each time we, we approach a song, we try and try and pick up on a different uh, a different topic, especially from the lyrics. And one of the lyrics that that uh, that I'm particularly proud of is the lyrics for a song called Beyond the Realms of Death, which was on the Stained Class album. Metal has kind of gone through a lot of changes. Today, of course, there's, there's never been as many different styles of metal as there, there is, and it, to me, that's fantastic. 
I ain't bothered whether it's, you know, a small little independent outfit that sells a couple of hundred albums a month to so many people, or a big mega outfit. To me, the thrill is metal being played to as many people as possible, in no matter what form as possible, as long as he's got that metal stamp all over it. That's great, but stay in class and beyond the realms of death was uh, was a not a personal song for me, but it, it conveys the story of of, of me uh, talking about this guy that uh, that quite literally has seen as much pain and as much um, torment and as much frustration going uh, going around him in his in any situation, in the family situation, in the world situation, or whatever. But just taking so much and then quite literally just switching off. Some people switch off for good. Some people switch off for a few weeks. Some people switch off for a few months. This is just a story about. A guy that switches off and uh, listens to his music and gets all of his energy and all of his release and all of his good times from music, and that's what Beyond the Realms of Death is all about. I mean, I'm sure there's people out there listening to me, at least one of you, I hope, that uh, that is in a band and is going through those problems where you can't get a deal, you can't get a contract, you might even be having a hassle trying to get a gig together. Listen, I've been there, we've all been there in this band. The one thing that keeps you going more than anything else is that belief in yourself, you know, is knowing that uh, someday by hook or by crook you're going to make it. Priest came together as a name, as a working outfit in 1969, I joined in 71, but we were still a struggling outfit in, in those days, and that's the only thing that really ha held us together. Sure, we had people um, uh, outside of Priest that, that believed in us also, and I've got to tell you, those people were the fans. Without them, it, it, without that person that actually sits down and listens to your music and responds and claps and jumps up and says that was great, without them, you ain't going to get nowhere. <laughs> You know, this stuff will be about for as long as people want us. We feel that we can still deliver the goods. We feel that we can still go out there and make good records and give good shows and, you know, entertain people, give everybody a great time, including ourselves, which is also very important. Without the fans, without those people, you ain't going to get nowhere. When yours truly has spare time, which is very rare these days, they put me in this big black box scene. It's like six, six inch nails and back. That's it, right? Don't let Alpha go anywhere until 19 centers. So. Fortunately, we're in a position now where, when we do get time off, we do a whole bunch of different things. I mean, um, you'll still find me going around the clubs. I mean, I, I just can't get enough of, of, uh, of metal and rock and roll. I love to go and check out what's uh, what's happening with um, with all the different bands, the new bands especially. I've got to tell you guys. I'm, I'm really, I'm a really boring person outside of this band. Oh dear. I mean, I just, I just live and eat and breathe heavy metal. That's me in, in, uh, in a nutshell. I'm a very uncomplicated person on one, on one extent. When it comes to music, I know what I want. I want my metal, and I have to have it. You know, if not 24 hours a day, at least, so, at least so many hours a day. My personal. Um, feelings on on things like drugs and booze i'm not going to be i'm not going to play god and say you know don't do this and don't do that that's not that's not my you know that's not my thing i, I think that i think that everybody has the the right the inalienable right to be an individual and uh, i think the important thing is is to, is to provide the education if you can let people know that if you do too much of this and you do too much of that then you're going to end up in a box six foot under education is the main the main area there you know it, it's letting people know that uh, that if you have too much of anything it can do you a harm you see whenever i get down or depressed i just put on some metal and blast my head off and i feel great afterwards you know i'm not i'm going to stick a needle in my arm you know i'm not going to down a, a large whatever um I find as I grow more and more, I really enjoy reality, you know. In the old days, Rob was like, oh, you know, is this reality? Forget it, let me turn off. Now I enjoy it to, to such an extent that I know what is good for me. And I feel that what is good for me is, is good for a lot of other people, but I ain't gonna pontificate about it. Like I say, you make that decision. But as far as, you know, the whole gamut of, of, of sex and heavy metal and preferences, I've never really looked upon it as, as a, as a sex thing, you know, I think that sex is sex. You do whatever you want, it turns you on. I mean, I, you know, whatever you want to be, as far as I'm concerned, is up to you. Again, it's your it's your own thing. It's your own it's your own uh, part of life, which is which is private and unique to you. 
I'm just against censorship 100%. I'm against bigotry in any form whatsoever. I think that people have a right to be what they want and to do what they want. And as long as you don't do it in the street in front of your grandmother, I say go for it and have a good time. When we, uh, when we came to think of what should we play on this, on this tour, what should we play for the UK, what should we play for the rest of Europe, it's, what a decision to have to make, you've got 13 albums, you've got about 10 songs on each album, what do you do, where do you decide, well of course we're happy to say that we're going to be doing the old priest classics like Living After Midnight, Breaking the Law, Green Man Leash, all that good stuff, Victim of Changes and uh, a selection of the new stuff as well. We've, uh, we feel that we put together a killer priest hardcore metal set from start to finish. It's almost two hours long. We can't play longer than two hours if we start to pull out, you know. We think, we've got, we think we've got a great set that we put together. So we can promise you that there's gonna be a little bit of everything for somebody. I know there'll be a few of you that are disappointed, that, oh, they didn't play excited, they didn't play this, that. Listen, if we went on stage and played every single song, we'd go up in a green puff of smoke and you'd never see us again. We just hope that what we're going to give you, what you're going to get an earful of, is what, uh, is what you're going to enjoy. And if we don't play what you like, you might see us in 1990. There's a thought, isn't it? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine the priest in the year 2000? Here comes Halford in his leather wheelchair with a stud glinting. It's all possible, you know. The priest by no means is a bunch of geriatrics, as we shall prove when we hit that UK stage. The new stuff we're going to be playing, and one of my personal favourites already, has to be the inimitable heavy metal. A lot of the stuff on the Ram It Down album is a, is a celebration. Right from Ram It Down, you know, raise your sights, the city lights are cool. And, you know, we're hot tonight, the time is right, there's nitro in the air. Thousands of cars and millions of the guitars. Oh, isn't that metal or what? I love heavy metal to death. It's fantastic. Well, we've almost come to the end. Oh, has this been, been an experience? This has been an experience for me. It has been great. Like, it's been a real pleasure being able to talk to you. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing you in the flesh, in that first row or whatever row you can get in. Just squeeze your body up front. And if you heard me on Radio 1, make, uh, make that known, because I know I haven't been talking to myself for the last so many minutes of my time. On a final note, We'd like to thank you, every single one of you, for your support for Priest all those years, all these years, all the years to come. It's been a great relationship. I'm sorry that we haven't been there again for, what, four and a half years? Let's forget that. Time is of no essence. Time is of no consequence with heavy metal. The Priest is back. Have a great time and keep defending the metal faith. This has been Rob Halford, a mercenary of metal from Judas Priest. It most certainly is. Thomas Vance at the controls here in the studios of Broadcasting House in dear old London Town. How are you? It's now 25 minutes past 11. I hope you had as much fun listening to that, our Judas Priest special, as I had putting it together along with my engineer this evening because the whole thing is, uh, was put together in a situation that they call live mixed to air, which is really exciting. It's like flying an aircraft. Unfortunately, I very nearly crashed at one point, so I apologize for the little muck up in the middle. I hope it didn't disturb the uh, the excellent music and the voice of Rob Halford. He's a f oh, he's just such a nice guy, a really fabulous guy. Uh, easy going, normal, natural rock and roller. Thank you very much, Robert. And also, many thanks to Morris and thanks to Jane as well. And I trust uh, you're looking forward to seeing Judas Priest just the same as I am in the United Kingdom, coming back for the first time in four and a half years. By that time, they will be so tight. You'll be so surprised at just how, how good they are. I think a lot of people have forgotten how good they are. They are truly a great metal band. and uh, One of the best in the world, undoubtedly. There you go. Said my bit. What am I going to do now? This time, play records. There's a good album out by Dirty Looks, and here's a track from that. Well, that's your lot for this edition of the Friday Rock Show, which, as always, is a Tony Wilson production. Following the Midnight Pips, you will hear on Medium Wave, Radio 1 News, on FM Stereo, Radio 2. And I hope you have a tasty weekend. My name is Tommy Vance. I sincerely wish you well. Hope you enjoyed Judas Priest. They're touring in June. God bless. Good night.